Welcome to the news. Were you ready for that? Perfect. <laughs> we news. are on episode... I don't know. Perfect. And we are bringing in <laughs> two articles that I have he doesn't know, and he has two articles that I don't know, and it's all about real estate news, deciphering what the headlines say as opposed to what's in the body of the text. I shall begin. Hmm. There is a new program by Palm Beach County where they're giving first-time homebuyers eligible up to $100,000, and they're funding it for people who are buying in Palm Beach County for the first time. Interesting. Including acquisitions, rehabilitations, new construction, down payments, and closing costs. Wow. That will be used towards their principal place of residence. Very interesting. I don't think mm. that they so it need... has to be their primary. Has to be their primary. Exactly. So I don't think you really need demand, but I can see where they're coming from, where people just cannot afford how expensive it has come. What do you think of this new program, and should they expand it to other places? Uh, I think it's a great idea. Why not? Give it a shot, if they've got the money. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one story. A city like New York doesn't have money for that. So, One story is that the Oro in Brooklyn was one of my first sales in 2009, and I did three sales there, three or four, at that time. And it was really hard to get financing because they literally froze financing. The government was giving $8,000 to first-time home buyers. I had two buyers that used that $8,000. There was a kicker, wow. though. There was a kicker that nobody knew. They thought it was free $8,000. It was not free $8,000, and they actually had to repay the $8,000 in cash in the future. I don't know the reasoning, when, but... When in the future? At but, the sale? Well, this is the interesting part. They didn't know. So they bought. They thought that this was free $8,000 by the government to be used for first-time homebuyers as a primary residence, similar to this and it had to be repaid. One of the people was so mad that their attorney actually paid the $8,000 for the buyer. I was just about to say, that's a great attorney. Because they never actually disclosed, you know, the asterisk behind it. So it would be very interesting. No such thing as a free lunch. If you're taking this $100,000, make sure you read into it. That's my story of the day. It's good to see that people are providing some assistance to post home buyers. Article number two. Real estate trust bought dozens of Brooklyn brownstones. Now it wants out. I actually saw that. Huh. Yeah. I'm surprised. I was going to use it, but it was not going to be a positive article, potentially. Well, I think it. I, one of the reasons that I printed this out, I figured that you could go through and read it because an Australian real estate investment firm owns 479 properties across New York City. They specialize in single family and one to four unit homes. So they own a ton of property. They bought them starting in 2011 and now they want out. Why Charles? Because they have a mortgage coming up. Well, Ooh, you weren't ready for that answer. Yeah, well, low interest rates. Why would they have to? You know. Well, because they their financing is coming due. Maybe they did ten year, fifteen year arm, or fixed. Their billion dollar real estate portfolio traded at over a dollar fifty a share from two thousand thirteen to two thousand eighteen. Now it trades for just thirty cents. Well, there you go. Some good investment. So they need to get some liquidity. Yes, they do. So there's going to be a lot of brownstones coming on the market in Brooklyn. That will be. But that is hungry for big funds. They will definitely take advantage of that. And that's why I reached out to them. And I said, I have a buyer for all of your Brooklyn Brownstones. Oh, I do too, actually. That's very huh. interesting. Yeah. Thank oh, that's you. a good idea. Maybe that's what a real it's, estate agent should do. It's huh. a bit I didn't look at the article because it looked negative. Well, the title was <laughs> very negative. But that made somebody click, which is good, and not me click. So yeah. that's the it, difference. I wonder why. Well, I, I thought I thought real estate was always a home run investment, Roger. Not a... <laughs> Talking about Australia, tourists yeah. are back in big numbers in New York City. I know you covered 
one in June or July about this, I'm going to bring up some numbers because everyone says New York City is look at the data dead. But let's look at the numbers. So the biggest amount of tourists or the highest amount of tourists ever in New York City was 2019. All right. Times Square pedestrian traffic in 2019 was 360. We are going to probably have, and this is per day, Times Square traffic, 365,000 in Times Square. That was 2019. We have topped out at 400,000 this year. Wow. 63, over 63 million visitors this year, 12% up from last year. And it is only 3 million away from the record. Hotel occupancy is at 87, over almost 88%. Huh. And near Times Square, it's above 90% on some weeks. This is, that, is uh, the tourists or the migrants? This is the very interesting one. Flights between China and the U.S. are only at 10%. Wow. 10%. So only what does that mean? percent of what it used to be in yeah. 2019. So that means almost 80% is coming from other countries, other states, wow. other areas. So imagine if China was at 100%, we would be at like 70 million people. There would be, this place would be crazy uh, with, uh, so that, that was the one data point. So right now in 2019, they were averaging 365 a day, 365,000 a day. Yep. And currently in 2023, we're averaging 4,000, 400,000? 400,000. Wow. And that's just Times Square pedestrian traffic. Just yeah. Times Square. So that's not the whole city. Because obviously when 63 million people are visiting, you divide that by 12 months, that's more people. But it just shows that's the one factor. And imagine if more people from China was coming to the U.S. So, wow. That, that's there incredible. There you go. What WeWorks restructuring means for New York City real estate? We are in one. We are in one. And it's interesting because I think I heard, I don't know where it was, but uh, Cushman has already reached out to every single one of the WeWorks about <laughs> purchasing or releasing their place. So, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity from the WeWorks. It's kind of like this uh, Brooklyn Brownstone company. You know, there is going to be restructuring. There's going to be availability. And then there's new people looking to come in and assume those leases. So... I thought that was really interesting, especially since we are in a WeWork, like you said. Certain buildings are better than others. At one point, you know, going into, I'd say, 2019, WeWork was the number one uh, leasing of properties, yeah. of offices in New York City. So they'd lease out entire buildings. Uh, obviously, that's changed. So, you know, here we are a couple of years later, going to make some big changes, which brings me to my bonus article. Well, on that... It's very funny. There's an Equinox right around here. And I was talking with this guy in the locker room one time about that I'm renting at, an e, uh, at a WeWork. And he said he knew the owner of this building. And the numbers, I think I brought hmm. this up one time, the, re, the way that WeWork ran the numbers was that if occupancy got to 75% was their baseline. So they ran the numbers that at certain rents and at certain costs, they would need just 75%. So obviously during the pandemic, that went out the window and they're probably way down, but still paying rent. So it would be very interesting how they structure the new leases. I think WeWork also reached out to their leasors well, to restructure their contracts. Because in June, WeWork had 777 locations across 39 countries. Within that footprint, the company reported supporting 906,000 workstations, 653,000 physical memberships, equating to 72% physical occupancy. Wow. So. Yeah. So that's below. So, so they're losing money. That's why they're losing money. If we work right files there. for bankruptcy, it would allow the company to break its leases without penalty, causing vacancy yep. rates to dry, rise dramatically. This could impact building owners and landlords and tenants with some standouts being Boston Properties, Root and Management, and XR, XR. Listen, they're not going to go out of business, okay? They're not going to go out of business, but they're even if they file for bankruptcy, like uh, the building that we're in is 
over 90% occupied at all times. So yeah. Well, Manhattan's office vacancy rate reached an all-time high of 22.4% in the second quarter. Occupancy or vacancy? Vacancy. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So that's 78% yeah. occupancy. So they're fine. But that's on average. So you have loser buildings and then you got winner buildings. That's true. Uh, which brings me to my bonus article talking about WeWork. Adam Newman sought more space at a building that he leased to WeWork. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, who is Adam Newman? Is the founder of WeWork. There you go. So I thought that was pretty funny. He is doing fine. He's down in Miami. He is... Oh, he's in New York. He's leasing out more space. I thought he just did a $230 million loan or something, or $150. Yeah. Like so well, he is quite an entrepreneur. Yeah, that's down in Florida. He, he is part of that loan, which is very interesting. Uh, I would love to know who's originating that loan. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be SoftBank. <laughs> Good one, Well, Charles. thank you. I love bringing humor to the real estate industry. So it is Eric. We'll be doing TikToks about humor. Just kidding. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed those five articles. Bonus article. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We're always open to what articles you'd like us to react to. Send us a DM on Instagram. And of course, on YouTube, like, follow, share, subscribe, anything else to take action. For future episodes, every single week, we'll be coming with four articles. Have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.